to you, you're a, you're a business and financial coach uh, and an accounting software consultant. Um, uh, so Stephanie works with New Zealand small businesses, uh, including a particular niche coaching bookkeeping uh, businesses. And as a certified partner for Zero, uh, MYOB, Workflow Max, and Recon uh, software packages. Uh, she helps small businesses to create efficient accounting processes and to understand what numbers of their business are telling them. So thanks for dialing in, Stephanie. You're welcome. Thanks for having me. No problem. So, hey, we're talking today about the wage subsidy scheme, and we're going to just sort of go over the real tip of that iceberg because we can we can go deep, but it becomes pretty personalised to each person's business at the time. But uh, yeah, why don't you just start by telling us what uh, what the wage subsidy scheme is and and who it's meant for? Sure. So uh, the government rolled this out really quickly, which was fantastic in the face of a lot of uncertainty, and it's really designed for um, businesses to be able to continue to employ their staff during this uncertain lockdown period. Uh, it covers 12 weeks, and the subsidy is for the employers. It's not for the employees. They, the employers uh, apply for it on behalf of their um, employees, but it's meant to, it's for the employers to be able to continue to pay the wages of their staff keep people employed during this time where they could have reduced income. Mm. That's really important where uh, suddenly a lot of businesses found their income is well, taken a huge dive, right? So everyone's closed a up. A dive or stopped in a lot yep. of cases, yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Uh, so numbers wise, uh, now it's around about seven grand, isn't it? It is $585 um, a week for 12 weeks. So, yes, that does roughly equate to $7,000 um, and something. Um, that is for a full-time employee. And if you've got part-time employees, they are $350 a week for 12 weeks. Um, it's important to note, though, that this does not replace the employ any employment agreement that you have with your staff member. And it also means, too, if you've got some part-time employees that are usually paid less than that 350 then you don't pay them 350 You just continue to pay them the, mm. what they would normally be getting at this time. Right. That's really important. I think one of the things that the government's really tried to push across is that uh, that money has to be passed on so the business just doesn't get seven grand. And, and Absolutely. Cut, like right? <laughs> Absolutely, and this is so important. Like I said, the intention of this is so that businesses will keep their employees employed and they will actually be releasing the names, publishing the in publicly available format of the businesses that have received the subsidy. So employees will be able to tell if they have received it. There will also be an audit process um, where you will have to um, justify why, I believe, why you've, um, applied for it because uh, it was only available to people who predicted or had um, a predicted 30% decrease in turnover um, for compared to last year and that, that turnover drop was um, based on what's happened with the COVID-19. They subsequently um, allowed that to be pre predicted on the on the next um, month by month, I think the wording is. I'm um, have to just be very clear about that. So you'd want to really just be getting that information from your bookkeeper or accountant to make sure that you're meeting the criteria. There's a detailed declaration that you have to um, as, uh, agree to when you get the subsidy. So make sure that you understand what you're actually agreeing to. It's, um, it's very generous that they've done it. And like they keep saying, it's on a high trust model. Um, and they've got it out really quickly, which has been phenomenal. Um, and now, um, you know, as time goes on, they're just winding up, winding up the details and clarifying details to say, what about this situation? What about this situation? And they have, um, uh, they have improved that declaration as well. This was a bit more detail since the initial claim as well. So there's been a lot of a lot. It's been shifting sands. It's been really interesting to be keeping on top of. I think the key was that the government got out there so quickly, right? Mm. Because you can't be waiting three months to get this <laughs> this while you aren't getting money into your business. So it was it was impressive that they got it out so what quickly. Amazing. And and <clears throat> you know, I was on the phone with one of my clients when at the time that the level four was um, announced, 
and uh, he's got seven employees and you know obviously that's puts someone into oh my gosh how am I going to continue to pay my employees how am I going to continue to run this business and so putting those wage subsidies in place you know even though in some cases they're not going to cover um, in a lot of cases they don't actually cover the employees wages yeah. they are actually goes a long way to um, helping to retain the employment of that of that person so that when we come back on those people are still employed right hey and so uh in terms of uh now this is way outside my area but uh in gst is, is that mm. income gst associated so or that income is not subject to gst it is um it is um not taxable income um for a company now if you're a sole trader it's treated slightly differently um, so you really need to talk to your accountant about that. Yeah, that should be the rule for but most things, to be fair. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Um, it's not subject to GST, and um, when you're coding it in your accounting software, again, get in touch with your bookkeeper or accountant to figure out, to find out how they would like you to code it. Um, but most people are coding it um, as a current liability account, mm -hmm. in that, and then, you know, apportioning a, a it throughout... Um, throughout the 12 weeks. And yep. I think it's important that uh, you don't pay. Um, well, it was important, now they're in a new financial year, it was important not to pay it all to your employee in a lump sum. There's a few mm -hmm. common sense reasons for that, but also yep. it could also have put them into a different tax bracket as well if they received it all up front. Anyway, if, that's if they quite received working for families and-, and Oh, also. lots of things, yeah. Yeah, exactly. yeah for sure. Yeah. Yep. So, and from a cash flow point of view, you really just want them to be paid every yeah, twelve. As weeks. normal. As yeah. normal, yeah. Yep. And you know what is normal in this case um, is dependent on a case by case basis. Uh, by signing the de declaration, you have said that you will endeavour with your best efforts to continue to pay them to eighty percent. Now, it's important to note that you must get their agreement to go to 80%. Mm. You can't just arbitrarily say, I'm only going to pay you 80% now. Mm. Um, and if you can afford to pay them 90%, then pay them 90%. Like, it's it's really a case-by-case -case basis. Yeah, and it's that kind of world at the moment, isn't it, where we're just trying to, just trying to help each other out as much as possible Absolutely. by mutual agreement? <laughs> yeah. Absolutely, yeah. yeah. And in some cases... Um, you know, the workload will will be diminished and it might be diminished to 80%. Um, it may be reduced to less than 80%, but by signing that declaration, you have said that you will do your best efforts to pay them to 80%. I'm not sure what that audit process is going to look like and how they're going to um, try and quantify that, but I think they will be looking at that very hard. Yep, significant sampling, I would imagine. <laughs> Maybe. Yeah. Hey, um, so let's talk about uh, contractors. So uh, a, a guy might be a builder. He's contracting to a building firm. He's got his own company that contracts to them. Uh, his hours get cut. So that would mm -hmm. fall into the he is employed by his con his own contracting company, if you like, uh, and he expects income to drop. Would that be sort of where that falls under? Yeah, they, they are allowed to apply for the, the wage subsidy. So um yeah, it has been deemed, there was a little uncertainty around that at the beginning, but they are able to do that. Hmm. That's great. And so do you see any other kind of um, subsidies like this coming out? Have you heard any sort of rumours about that? Um, maybe those that weren't caught by into that scheme or? There's been very few people that have not been caught into that oh, scheme. That, yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, you know, there was a lot of insecurity um, and uncertainty around that to begin with, but um, you know, generally speaking, if you could, if you were um, expected to draw a, a wage or a salary from any company or any business, then you were eligible to be paid. There was some confusion over casual employees, but they they are captured by this, so the employer can apply for the wage subsidy on behalf of their casual employee as well. Great to help them pay their their salary for twelve weeks. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And like I said, the um. You know, the part-time wage subsidy is $350 and your part-time people may not be working um, that many hours. And it has been, uh, Grant Robertson um, confirmed that you can pull the money to um, to help pay the rest of your employees. Um, mm. And 
essentially the money is there to go towards employees it must be paid towards your employees and you must retain your employees for 12 weeks yeah and i think that's really important is that there's an hr component that's heavily weighted in here right that's huge you can't you can't get out of your hr responsibilities because no, you've been paid right. and, I, and i feel like we're going to be i'm a little bit concerned about this to be fair because um, I think there's been a lot of businesses who have not fully understood that, yeah. and uh, have, and I think potentially we, you know, could be up for some personal grievances when all this is said and done. Um, mm. Most of the majority of business owners have been very diligent and correctly handled this, but it is definitely something that you need to understand what your obligations are. That this, mm. this there's been no change to the Employment Relations Act. So your responsibilities mm. as an employer have not changed. If you cannot pay your employees, then uh, communication is the absolute place to start. You need to be talking with them about the situation. You, if there's any variance to your, to their employment, you need to get their agreement from it for it. Um, so there's a bunch, there's a bunch to consider because you've getting the wage subsidy, you've agreed to keep them employed. So um, there, there's a lot to think about and it is possible that you will need to be talking to an HR consultant or an employment lawyer to yeah. help you get this right. And of course the business owners have the business finance guarantee scheme where they can borrow up to $500,000 unless they're whale processing Processing whale meat, <laughs> just one of the yeah. Know, I haven't looked at that exact. yet, to be honest. I know that's yeah. been released, and the books are just now starting to um, to roll that out. It's probably a bit more up your alley. Um, mm. I haven't needed to. I haven't had a client that's needed to go down that route yet. But that's, that's not great. to say that they won't. Yeah, um, yeah. That's there's a lot news. still to unroll here. Mm. Yeah, brilliant. All right. Thank you for that. That's uh, that's a really good overview of the wage subsidy scheme. So, if a business owner is, has, hasn't done this for some reason yet, uh, first thing, talk to their accountant about their um, uh, comparison to last year or their forecast for the next couple of months, and find out whether that's for them. Yeah, they have to really determine first of all, do they meet the criteria, and their accountant or bookkeeper will be able to um, help them decide that. Um, you know, you don't have to have them uh, applied already. It really is going to depend how well you're going to be able to trade through this um, and, you know, come out the other side. The more that the more businesses that we can get to trade through this, the better that will be, the better space that we'll be in as an economy um, for long term. So, um, you know, let's do what you can. Um, one thing I will note too is that the Regional Business Partners Network has uh, some extra funding from the government to help businesses that have been um, really affected by COVID-19. Uh, it's for full, fully funded um, help in the areas of the HR, uh, business continuity, finance and cash flow and budgeting and um, uh, health and wellness as well. So four key right. areas. Um, I've submitted a service, so I've got some clients that are being fully funded um, in Auckland, it's monitored by ATEED um, for some cash flow um, and financial planning and business continuity planning, like just working with a coach to figure out how you're going to get through this period of time. So if um, if that's something you feel like you could need some extra help with that, then certainly reach out um, to the regional business partners and there'll be a lot of people that are working with that space, including myself. Okay, we'll get a link to that on the various social medias that we put this video on. So that will be a uh, big yeah. help to people, I think. Yeah. Yes. Excellent. All right. And um, all right. So we'll um, we'll put links to you you and and also the the regional business partners uh, in the social media. And uh, thanks for uh, coming on and chatting today. Yeah, you're welcome. And any questions, just reach out. Brilliant. Cheers.